All right, hello. Um, so I'd like to start today with reviewing some of the stuff we did from last time. So we'll do that with you answering some questions and then I'll kind of talk through them. So if you haven't already answered these from the lecture document, please pause and do that and then I'll kind of walk through these. Um, so the first question is, well, what do you call a running uh, program? And so we need a separate word here because when you write um, you know, a notebook or let's say a .py file that you might could run, um, let, let's say it's a uh, .py file that might run for a long time. You could imagine a scenario where you could open up two terminal windows at once and type python program.py, python program.py, and be running the same program at, at multiple times. And so we'd have one program, but in that case, two processes. Um, we could have one program and many processes. Uh, if you write some code but you haven't run it yet, then you have one program and no processes. So we need that separate word process instead of just program. The second one, let's say we have this large uh, list of fruits, apples, bananas, whatever, and um, there's two different lines of code we could run on it. We could insert a pineapple at the beginning, so that's at index zero, um, or we could uh, pop the value at, at the end. So at index negative one, that would remove the last item from the list. And so the question is, well, what is trying to be faster? We have lots of items. And the answer is that uh, popping from the end is trying to be a lot faster because uh, we don't have to shift everything over. Let me show you a picture to show why that first one is, is slow. Um, if I want to add the value one at the beginning, I have to move all these other uh, values over in, in this big list. And remember that this big list that every process has has a special name. That's the address space of a process and all the data, all the uh, kind of state of a running process is in, uh, in the address space, whether that be uh, multiple lists, variables, references, um, strings, integers, right? But it's all this big address space that contains uh, bytes. And bytes were just these integers between 0 and 255. Okay, so next question. What is an example of a resource that an operating system might allocate to a process? Well, it turns out there's lots of resources, um, but the big one we talked about last time was time on the CPU. Um, you know, CPUs used to have one core in them. Now they might have a few. Um, and each remember, each core in a CPU is kind of like a mini CPU in and of itself um, that's able to run processes. And so um, let's say I have four cores in my CPU chip. Um, that means I can run four processes at a time. And I might have a lot more than four processes uh, kind of the, that I have on my computer at any given point in time. And so what the operating system will do is it'll decide, well, of these four, who gets to run on them when, right? And it'll kind of swap back and forth which processes run. And so you as a computer user probably don't even realize that you can only be doing four things. I mean, you probably have 20 tabs open in your web browser right now, and it's not a problem because, uh, well, thank you to the operating system. Um, so that was a big one we talked about, time on the CPU. Um, there's some other answers that'd be fine. Um, space and memory is is something, right? I mean, we only have so much RAM, and uh, and that will be limited per process, right? We don't generally want uh, one process to eat up all our all our memory. Um, other resources might be space and files. Um, if I have multiple programs that are using the internet, maybe downloading things, um, the operating system could be involved in deciding how much network bandwidth they all get. The last one, um, which has to do with reproducibility, uh, if we were writing some Python code, what do we have to worry more about matching? Do we have to worry about what hardware we're running on? And uh, the, the main thing with hardware here is the CPU and its instruction set. Remember that the instruction set is this big table where we have all these operations in it, and each operation has a number. So for example, maybe five means add, right? That's instruction set of a CPU. Maybe five means something else in a different CPU's instruction set. Right, so that's the hardware. Other answer is uh, the operating system. And, uh, and the answer here, the correct answer, is that we have to worry about matching uh, the operating system. And so the picture you should have in your mind is above. Um, what you can see is that I have a CPU, which kind of have a certain shape to it. That's the instruction set. And um, in your operating system, in this case, Windows has to fit that. And then I have a, a Python interpreter, which needs to be able to work with both um, 
both the operating system and the CPU, right? It has to fit the shape of both of those. And uh, with respect to the CPU, the Python interpreter kind of hides the shape of that. Um, I can write my Python code in one way, and if I run on different interpreters, I don't have to worry about the fact that I have different um, CPUs, so it's kind of a non-issue. Uh, but the Python interpreter does not do such a great job of hiding the shape of the operating system. So that's something I do have to worry about uh, when I'm writing my Python code. And in particular, things like, well, do I use a forward slash or a back, backward slash in my file paths? That depends, am I on Windows or, or Mac? Uh, 